everyone. This is Shelly again from Little Bird Yarn Company, and this is my first video um, that's going to introduce you to the basics of hand spinning and the basics of wool fiber. You'll come out understanding a little bit about what spinning does to wool fiber to make it yarn, as well as um, basically begin to start spinning with your hands. So um, to get us started, I've got, there's Daffodil again. Um, hi, sweetie. I've got some wool fiber here. Um, this braid is basically a long kind of tube is not quite, oh God, Daffodil just walked away with some. Hey, Daffy, come back here. Come back here, please. You can't take that. Thank you. Please, thank you. Um, you see, it's basically just, um, a tube is hollow, so it's not quite the right word, but it's just a very long, thing of wool fiber um, that has been dyed. So as you all know, wool comes from animals. Wool comes um, particularly from sheep. And this particular wool fiber is Chevio. Chevio is a breed of sheep. Um, it produces a wool, uh, a kind of wool that I highly recommend for people learning to spin. While Chevio does not produce a wool that is necessarily um, as soft as merino, you probably wouldn't be able to make a, a knit hat with Chevio fiber for a baby. It's really great. It has some great properties for people learning to spin. Um, so what are those properties? First of all, if you smell it, it smells like farm because it comes from one. Um, that smell is lanolin. It is left on the wool fiber. It's kind of great. It, the grease is probably the closest thing that, that I can, um, the closest word I can use to describe what lanolin is. Um, but that grease is going to help you spin. It's going to help hold the fibers together. The other thing about Chevio is it's very kinky. Um, it's got a lot of crimp in it. And the result is it's going to help you as a beginning spinner. Uh, those fibers are going to hold on to each other. It's going to be kind of like a, a handicap. Merino is a very smooth fiber. It's got very short hairs. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> and it is not the best for learning to spin. Though once you get better, I highly recommend spinning Merino. Um, so... What is spinning? So I've grabbed a bit of the Chevio fiber. And um, if you pull out just a few, just a little bit, you'll see a length about that long. That is actually how long the wool fiber is on the Chevio sheep. Um, it's, gosh, this looks to be about six inches or so. My hair is probably 12 inches long. Um, so each, each fiber, each piece of fiber on the Chevio sheep is about four to six inches long. So then what's this? What's this gigantic thing? Well, basically, um, they sheared the sheep, they took the wool fiber off of the sheep, they sent it to a mill, and then they lined up all the fibers, not so they're next to each other, but so that they're interlacing each other all the way down the length so that this piece is probably about 20 feet long. The first objective with spinning is to, is to get these fibers not so they're interlocked like this, but so they're interlocked like this. And all you have to do to do that is kind of tease them out. So if you, for example, if you get your fiber, get a, get a, a bit of it, and you hold your hands really close together, you'll see you actually can't break the fibers. But if you move your hands further apart to where one lock has started and one lock um, and one lock has started and the other lock has ended and in that place another lock has started and another lock has ended you'll see you can actually pull the fibers apart the objective with spinning is to pull them apart not so that they're completely separate but so that they're kind of at the last little bit of where they're connected and at the same time incorporate twist. So here's how I recommend all of my spinning students to start. Grab a bit of your wool fiber. It's really easy to do. You can kind of break off something like this and then take kind of a skinny strip and then practice teasing it out 
so that you are making the fiber longer and skinnier, but you aren't breaking any of the fibers. I always recommend starting any craft just with your hands. Bring the tools in later once, you under, once your hands start to understand what they're doing. So look at how much longer I was. I could probably even make it longer. So now we've taken our very, very thick, dense wool fiber and we have made it skinnier, less dense and longer. All we're gonna do, the only difference between this and spinning is that we're gonna add twist. So try that. Take your long, skinny, skinnier, less dense, um, bit of wool fiber and just start to, here, this is what I'm doing. Just start to spin it. So I'm spinning, 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 spinning it, twisting it. So what does twist even do? What does spinning even do? It takes this wool fiber that um, has the, the locks, the wool fibers just barely touching each other, and it kind of makes them stronger. Not kind of, that's exactly what it does. It makes them stronger, it makes them more durable, it makes it so that they won't break as easily. So um, now I've added even just a little bit of twist just to this like eight inches. Um, that's not eight inches. That's like 14 inches or 16 inches of um, wool fiber. And now look, I can pull on it and it won't break. It would have broken easily. If I take the untwisted part and I pull on it, it breaks right apart. If I take the twisted part and pull on it, it doesn't break. Oh, it just did right there. But you get the idea there. Twist, it doesn't break. So that's what spinning is. Spinning is taking wool fiber, teasing it apart, adding twist, and the twist makes it durable, makes it strong, makes it so that it won't break. So what's the next step? Now that you've got that down, the teasing a part of the fibers, the twisting of the fibers, now see if you can do it at the same time. See if you can take your little bit of wool fiber, see if you can twist and pull. What you should be able to do is get a pretty long, and if you get a thick part, just kind of get a little bit closer to it tease it apart. A lot of this, you guys, is not about my belief. A lot of this is not actually about instructions and telling you what to do. It's about giving you the materials and a starting point and then you figuring out what you can do on your own. So I got a thick part, so I'm going to kind of tease that apart, add some more twist, and you see I've got a, I'm pulling on it right here, I've got a very, very strong wool fiber that I have just made with my hands. What's the next step? Here's another bit of wool fiber. You can get, here it is, a crochet hook. I got this at the Scrap Exchange. There was about five of them for a dollar. If you live in Durham, I highly recommend going to the Scrap Exchange for any materials like this. Take your crochet hook, take the hook part, hook it onto a bit of fiber, and then pull out the fiber. And while you're pulling, twist. And you will see that you are doing with the crochet hook exactly what you are doing with your hands. The fiber is getting teased apart. At the same time, the twist is making it stronger. And the twist is going, you see it's going into the supply to prevent it from breaking off. So that's the other magical thing about twist. What twist does is it enables us to tease out these fibers even thinner without them breaking. Isn't that incredible? Um, wool actually has microscopic little hooks. And those hooks, I always tell kids it's like Velcro. Those hooks want to grab hold of each other. So you don't have to worry if you break the fibers because if you put some fiber next to some other, some, some disconnected fiber next to some other disconnected fiber, you put them next to each other, you add some twist, they're actually gonna connect just like magnets, just like Velcro. That's the way uh, wool fiber is. Um, it's an amazing material. Okay, that's the end of the second video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, some great sources 
sources for wool fiber. Your local yarn store probably has some. I also recommend highly the Woolery. It's the Woolery.com. You can get wool fiber in any different kind of breed, um, some dyed, some undyed, but that's where you could definitely get um, some Chevio wool. Our next video, I will introduce you basically to um, how to start using a drop spindle. Hope to see you there. Bye.